Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is with Google. So if you don't know by now, Google has just started hiring freshers and in this video we'll be talking about the eligibility, we'll be seeing how you can apply and get your resume shortlisted and we'll be talking about how you can clear the interviews as well. So before you apply, make sure that you watch the full video so that you have the best chance at getting shortlisted and so that you have the best chance at clearing the interview. And one more thing is that whenever there's off-campus opportunity, I make a video about it and how to crack it on this channel. So if you're a fresher looking for internship or if you're a like graduate looking for a full-time job, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I'll be bringing a lot more off-campus opportunities as soon as it comes along with a complete guide on how to crack it. Now coming back to this opportunity, let's talk about the eligibility first because of course you want to know the eligibility. So eligibility is if you're graduating in 2026 or before that, then you are eligible. So it is open for 2026 graduates. It's open for 2025 graduates. And before that, you are eligible. The role is SDE1 and they're accepting 2026 grads, freshers and before that. So you can easily apply if you come under this category. Now, talking about the degree, if you are a bachelor's in computer science, computer engineering or any other related field, then again, you can apply. And of course, the link to apply will be in the description box, but make sure to watch the full video before applying. So the first thing will be, of course, your resume shortlisting. Now, what can you do to make sure that your resume gets shortlisted? This is going to be very important because Google is very strict about the standards that they maintain for resume shortlisting. This is why a lot of you apply and then don't get your resume shortlisted. So let's talk about what all you need to put in your resume so that you get shortlisted. Now, the first thing is, of course, high quality projects. So make sure that you have a front end, back end or a full stack project. Make sure that the project is high quality, not just an average project or a clone project. You need to have a high quality, good project in your resume if you want to get shortlisted into Google. Now I've made two entire videos about how you can make some good projects and how even project ideas about how you can make them. So watch those videos if you haven't already, but you need to have some good projects and you need to deploy them and then put the link in the resume. So your project should be very, very good if you want to get shortlisted. Now, programming languages can be anything. You can be good with C++, Java or Python. All are fine. So you don't need to worry about that. But you do need to have a good level of expertise in whatever programming language you are choosing. Now, one thing that will give you a great advantage in Google is a good coding profile. So whether on lead code, code forces, code shift, anywhere, if you have good rating, you have a good coding profile, you've solved good amount of problems and you've achieved a good ranking or rating, then you can showcase that in your resume that will definitely give you an edge. All right. So if you have a good coding profile, mention that in your resume at the bare minimum, mention your lead code profile and the amount of problems you've solved. If you've solved 500 plus thousand plus again, that will give you a little bit of edge, right? And a good coding profile will definitely give you a great edge. So you need to have good projects in your resume. You need to put a good coding profile if you have. And apart from that, of course, you need to have a good ATS score. So you should have an ATS friendly resume. If you don't have the relevant keywords, then you're going to get rejected automatically right at the start. So I'll give some keywords in the description box that you need to have. And I'll also give some templates that you can use to make your resume more ATS friendly. And if you want to get your resume reviewed by me, then I can also help you in making your resume more ATS friendly and increase your chances of getting shortlisted. So I'll give a link to my top mate. I do resume reviews on there. If you're interested, you can definitely check that out as well. Now, after you clear your resume shortlisting, then you'll come across the interviews. Now, interviews at Google are not to be underestimated. They have some really good quality problems that are there. So of course, you need to be very good at DSA. Without DSA, you'll have a very tough time clearing the interviews of Google. So first of all, I'll give some interview experiences in the description box. So I have recorded some podcasts with Google SDEs who have shared their interview experiences. So you can watch that as well. Apart from that, I'll also give some articles of the interview experiences so that you have a good idea about how the process is going to be like. But in a nutshell, you need to be good at DSA. You need to be good at solving lead code problems. And yes, here you need to be good at solving medium level or even medium hard level lead code problems because Google does ask lead code hard problems. So make sure that you're good with medium and medium hard problems. Now, the best way to practice is doing Striver sheet. So Striver has a sheet of 180 problems. You can just do problems from there. At least try to do medium, medium hard problems. If you ask about the most important topics, then considering Google, the most important topics will be graph, trees, 
and uh, dynamic programming of course you can expect a good problem in dynamic programming and even try but these three graph tree and dynamic programming these are very important for google you need to be very good at solving their problems if you want to crack google so you need to have a good hand at practicing lead code problem you need to give lead code contests you need to give lead code problems and you need to make sure that you do problems on driver sheet and i'll also give some previous year asked coding questions that google has asked in the past you can solve them as well that will also help you in getting a good understanding of what the problems are going to be but one more thing is very important apart from solving the problem one more thing is very important that is your thought process and your communication skill so google's interview is going to be almost all around dsa you might have a little bit of cs fundamentals about networking tcp ip machine learning these kind of questions you can have but the majority of the interview will be about dsa so you need to be very clear with your thought process you need to be very clear with your communication to the interviewer so make sure that you answer confidently and clearly so that the interviewer will be satisfied with your thought process one more thing is very important in a google interview i forgot to mention this before is that your coding should be very clean even if your code runs completely fine and you explain everything well if your code is not proper if it's not formatted if you're not using the proper variable names you will get rejected so just to remind you make sure that your code is modular make sure your code is well formatted make sure you're using proper functions and make sure you're using variable names that are good don't use ijk and xyz make some proper variable that explain what the variable is doing all right so whenever you're naming a variable give it a proper name in accordance with the problem because i have seen people getting rejected in google interview even after solving the problem because their code was not clean so focus on coding well clean focus on communicating well to the interviewer and focusing on improving your problem solving skills as much as you can and within doing all of this you will be easily able to clear the google interview so all of the resources that i'm mentioning along with a good resume template will be in the description box so make sure that you check the description box out and make sure that you subscribe for more off campus opportunity i'll be bringing a lot more off campus opportunity as soon as it comes you will see it on this channel so make sure that you subscribe and let's see you in the next video